What's up guys, my name is David and we are back at it building this Avid Flyer Mark IV. It's a backcountry bush plane that I'm building. I drove several states away to pick this thing up. And in today's video, we are doing the wide body mod. It's basically stretching the doors just a little bit and then welding some cage structure in place. So you have a little bit more elbow room, a little more shoulder room, just makes it a little more comfortable to ride in. And if you can hear that 3D printer in the background, that's me printing my first molds to do some forged carbon fiber work. I've been looking to do this for a while, so stick around for that. Welcome to Let's Build This. My name is David, and I love to design, build, and fly. Join me as we discover those three areas and more. So step one for this approach was to stretch these doors. And all I did was simply just hold it or clamp it kind of down in this area. And then I basically just pulled kind of in this area down here on the lower corner. And then I just pulled that until I could feel it stretch. So when I first did that, the bottom part was sticking out a little bit more than the shoulder area here. And so in order to fix that part, I basically just put a little pivot point under here and then I stretched this down to bend this area back down. So once I did that, I was able to get a nice spacing down here and up here as well. So I got all my tubing from Aircraft Spruce and we are ready to go. All right, so for this project, you're gonna need eight pieces that are three feet long each. I use the same diameter as what the doors are made out of. And then I basically uh, took two of these pieces and I bent them. So this one has a slight bend, which matches the door on the bottom end. And then this bend here matches kind of that upper corner. All right, so where you see the spacing here on the sides, I'm gonna put a little standoff right here, right here, and right here. So let's get started. All right, if you're getting value out of this channel, please consider subscribing. There's a lot more to come on this build. I plan to do a ton of this bush plane, so be sure to subscribe and like this video. All right, so I opted not to film all of the welds during this process. It is a ton of work to manage all the welding plus filming it at the same time, so I chose to just be focused on the welding. So I'll just talk you through some of that. The first thing I did is I tack welded all the standoffs in place, got those all shaped out, and then I took those outer frames and got them all fit up and set in place. And then I tack welded those as well. Then I welded everything out just so that I could reach all those tight corners. The next thing I did was get all of the support structure in place. So I got all of those fit up and then welded those in place as well. All right, so here's where I ended up with all the support pieces in place. These tie it back into the fuselage and provide a little bit extra support. So it provides it the structure. It gives it the geometry, so it's got the right look with the fabric once we stretch that over. One thing I might add to this is on this one here, this little cross support along the center, it's basically gonna be hidden until you get to about this spot right here, and then it will start to show up right before that baggage door. And so I may add another piece in here that just ties that back in so that I've got a nice continuous line all the way up to this point. All right, and the other places I'm thinking about adding some additional structure is from here to here and here to here. Basically where the bush here mounts up, I want that to be really strong and sturdy. And once all that's done, I just need to repeat all this structure on the opposite side. All right, just a quick note on safety. Whenever you're doing projects like this, be sure to wear eye protection, hearing protection, and use a respirator. When I was welding on the fuselage, some of that powder coating, if it was getting really hot, it would kind of start to smoke. And some of that was coming out. It's not good to breathe in. So I actually picked up this respirator. It's a little bit older. You can see paint on it and whatnot, but um, this is a respirator that's built specifically for welding. It fits underneath your welding mask. And so this has been a great tool to have helps protect those lungs. And so if you're interested in it, I dropped a link down below for this on Amazon. So check it out and be sure to be safe. All right, isn't this great being able to sit on the bush wheel of your airplane while you work on it? It's awesome. All right, so for the hardware for the doors, it comes with these little tabs welded on. 
here and here. So I'm actually planning on removing all of this. And I thought, what better opportunity to start to do some forged carbon work than to fabricate and design my own set of door handles. So I'm 3D printing the mold right now. We'll go check that out and see how it's going. All right, so these are the first 3D printed molds. And this one here was the very first one. I got it off the printer and I realized, you know what, this is not quite the right dimensions for what I'm looking for. That's okay. God gives us talents and gifts. We're supposed to refine those gifts and talents and share them with the world. And you know what? This is great because this is learning. The way that we learn is by doing, getting out, trying stuff, making mistakes, learning from those mistakes. That's how we get better. And so I encourage you that if you feel like you can't do it or you suck at it or whatever it is, just get out there and learn. That is how you're going to grow and that's how you're going to get better. So I hope that that inspires you. So for this mold, it's really a two part or three part design. You could have this be a single piece and then this is the piston piece. You put all that forged carbon in there, you wet it up with the epoxy and then you just keep stuffing that in there. There's a certain ratio that you want to have on these. It's 60% forged carbon, 40% epoxy. And so you'll just wet that up and get that in there. And once you've got that filled up, it's actually got these uh, screw holes. So I'll actually clamp this down. This is a three piece design. The reason I did that is because this cavity in here is a little bit deeper. And so because there's really no draft angle on the inside of this, I wouldn't be able to pull that part out of this. And so I split the mold. I basically just went into Fusion 360, drew a line down the middle, sort of, <laughs> and uh, split that into two parts. So if you want to watch the full process on how I forged this part, check out that next video. You can find it right here.